In this video, we're going to be using technology to find a line of best fit for a linear function. So you may have noticed in that last video that there was a point uh, where on the screen of my calculator, which I will leave up over here, you could see where it gave you the equation of the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient. And so what we're going to learn to do in this video is I'm going to teach you to do that. So notice that this uh, video doesn't necessarily have a lot of questions in it or really any questions in it. It's more a tutorial to get you to practice doing this. So you're best served by actually doing what I'm doing with your calculator so that you can follow along. Um, also on the notes that go with this, uh, at the very bottom of that page you'll see um, sort of a shortcut version of everything I'm going to tell you here in a dotted line. I would like for you to cut that out and to keep that with you as just sort of like a shortcut uh, for how to do all of this. So let's talk about what we're going to see once we uh, use this technology, the TI-84, to find our line of best fit. Uh, this is the data that we're going to use um, in order to find a regression. It's the same one we looked at last time, so we know what the equation is going to be. Uh, it's again temperature and ice cream sales. We're going to wear that example out. But when you're finished, your calculator will give you results that look like this. And I want to make sure that you understand how to interpret those results, uh, because what will happen is you get something that looks like this. y equals ax plus b. That a is just this a right here. So imagine replacing that a with 30.08, blah, 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 blah. And this b is just this b right here. So in order to find our line of best fit, I would just say y equals replace that a with the number times x plus b, and b is negative in this case, so I can go ahead and say minus 159.474. And there we go. I have the equation of the line of best fit, which, remember, is one of those things that I'm wanting. Oh, excuse me. Um, and to get the other one, r, I'm going to look right here. So again, for r, make sure you're looking at r, not r squared. r squared will be important later, but for right now, while we're dealing with linear regression, we want r, and that's what's called our correlation coefficient. Remember, the closer it is to 1, the better fit for the data. So this is a pretty good fit for the data. And because it's positive, it tells us this is a positive correlation. So the bigger question is, how do we make our calculator give us that? And here are the four steps. Uh, first, we want to turn on the diagnostic function. Because if we don't, it won't give us the correlation coefficient. And that's not really what... Like, that's half of what we're after. So, of course, we want it to give us the correlation coefficient. Then we have to enter the data into the calculator. And then we have to select the appropriate regression. In this case, we're looking for linear regression. And then we've got to record the results. So let's look first at how to turn on the correlation coefficient. Now, the good news is you only have to do this once. So once you do this once at the beginning of the class period, that calculator is set up and ready to go, and we'll show you the correlation coefficient every single time so that we only have to do this once. Um, however, uh, I can't guarantee that the person that had that calculator before you in another class did that. So it's probably not a bad idea to make sure we do this at the beginning of each class period and certainly at the beginning of any test. So here's what we have to do. We're going to go into the catalog of functions for this calculator, the big list of everything it can do, and we're going to look for a function called diagnostic on. So to get to the catalog, notice that's written in blue above zero. So I press second and then zero, and that brings up the catalog. And now I can just use the arrows to scroll through this, but I'm trying to get all the way down to the D, so a faster way to do that, you see this green D right above the X raised to the negative 1 button. If we hit that, it takes us right to the D's, and now I can scroll down, and there I see Diagnostic On. So if I hit Enter, it brings up the command, and if I hit Enter one more time, it says Done, and now I have turned on Diagnostics, 
so that the correlation coefficient will be displayed. So again, only got to do that once. Now, I have to enter the data into the calculator. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the stat menu, just look for the button kind of in the center that says stat, and I'm going to click that button, and now I want to click edit. So I can just hit stat, enter, and it'll bring up this list. And what I want to do is type the X values in L1 and the Y values in L2. For the sake of speed, and because it is just terribly exciting to sit there and watch a video of somebody punching numbers in the calculator, I'm going to put all these in, but I'm going to speed up the video so that it goes a little bit faster. Uh, but all you're going to do, X values in L1, Y values in L2, use the arrow keys and enter to move around to the next item. Once you are done entering the values, one thing you want to check is make sure they line up. So just take a couple spots and make sure it matches the data. And again, if you're wondering, I'm getting this data uh, from one of the previous slides, the ice cream sales versus temperature. Uh, so you can use your note sheet actually to get that information to enter into the calculator. Once it all matches up, we are ready for the next step. And so that next step is to actually ask the calculator to do the regression for us. So what we're going to do, you can leave this by saying second quit, or you can just press the stat button again and it'll bring this menu back up. But this time, instead of editing the list, we want to calculate. So use your uh, right arrow to select calculate. And now we've got all kinds of options for what we want to do. And notice, just for future reference, linreg is a linear regression, but we also have quadratic, cubic, quartic, another linear regression that gives our equation in a different way. And this is a type of exponential, a natural log regression that we're not going to deal with. Uh, you can see there are lots of options here. Right now, all we're doing is a linear regression of the form AX plus B. So just pick number four, and you can either type the number four or hit enter, and it brings up this screen. And you'll have to hit enter one more time after this, and there you go. Now you have all of your data. Now one thing I cannot stress enough is that after you have this data, record it write it down somewhere, pencil and paper, where it cannot go away, because if you hit clear uh, and somehow accidentally clear your list from the stat menu, you're an unhappy camper and you have to re-input all those values, which nobody wants to do. Make sure you write this down somewhere durable where you can have it, get your equation and your correlation coefficient R so that you have all of that information at your disposal. If you do clear it out accidentally, but you haven't deleted it from your stat list, if you hit second, enter, it brings up the last command that you brought up, 
and so you can hit second enter and then get it back that way just in case but again record it better safe than sorry on this so that's how you do a linear regression in the TI-84 make sure you cut out that part of your note sheet that has the dotted lines on there and just use that as kind of a quick reference and folks the more you do this the easier it will be to remember for the quiz and or test uh, make sure you're practicing this enough that you get some muscle memory with it. Good luck!